Hello fellow human beings and welcome to my first devlog. Today I'm going to show you the project I'm working on. Very quick explanation on what it's about, what's going on. It's a multiplayer game. You take control of a squirrel in a deadly post-apocalyptic world full of threats and dangers everywhere. And in order to increase the chances of your survival, you build yourself some mecha giant fighting robots that help you fight for your survival and uh, please don't tell this my buddy Todd Howard but those mechas also serve as your base let that sink in anyway let me quickly explain how I got to this project and why I am working on this So, recently I've been playing a lot of multiplayer survival base building kind of games together with a few other humans. To name a few, we played Raft, Valheim, Grounded, and every once in a while I get back to play a few sessions of Minecraft. While playing these games, I noticed a few similar patterns in how the gameplay is designed throughout different titles. Things like basic gameplay loops, accessibility, activities, or to generalize everything, the way how these games are meant to be played. So I asked myself, am I able to create a game with similar mechanics? Now, I've been programming games since a couple of years already. In that time, I created a few simple games, some games with a little more advanced systems working in the background, as you can see here. Some mobile games, yeah, this is, this is a little um, RPG I was working on. and. This right here is some kind of survival shooter I was trying to trying to build. Yeah, as you can see, I've been building some games, but I didn't really make a multiplayer game. Except that one time back in 2016, where I worked myself through Bracky's multiplayer FPS tutorial, of which I 100% forgot everything about by now. And also, Unity recently released their new networking framework that I wanted to try out, so I decided the time couldn't get any better. I am starting this right now. but. What game actually? At first, I analyzed the most recent games I played and enjoyed in order to find some similarities in gameplay and design. I compiled a little list, let's get quickly through it. One of the first things I noticed that most current games actually have is a crafting system. Now, please don't get me wrong, but nowadays you find crafting systems in nearly every survival kind of game. It's a bit like, it's like the whole idea revolving around obtaining new items is basically finished evolving after crafting was invented or established and normalized by Minecraft. At least that's what it seems like to me. Going on with number two, it's base building. This mostly consists of running around, gathering resources, bringing resources to a place you find nice and then gluing everything together until it looks like a mansion that you want to spend the rest of your life in. Number 3 is staying alive. Basically this is a mechanic that revolves around gathering consumables so your character doesn't starve to death. Some games take this very seriously, like Raft or Grounded. If you don't get something to eat on time, you die. Some other games use this mechanic to give players benefits. Let's take a look at Valheim for example. Food massively boosts your health and energy and later in the game it's basically impossible to play it without having eaten something. Either way, having a food system in the game also gives the players the feeling of constantly having a side quest for taking care of having enough to eat. Just like in the regular human life we daily partake in. Is this good? Is this bad? I seriously don't know. At least it's something to keep players busy. And depending on the regular gameplay it has, it can also be branched into other systems. Let's take a look at Warham for example again. It also has a fishing system. Now if you don't know what a fishing system is, a fishing system is a system for fishing fish. That's why it's called a fishing system. With these fish you can either cook some delicious food or you can craft some bait so you can catch even nightier fish. The cycle repeats a few times until you are finally able to fish the greatest fish that can be cooked for the greatest boost of energy. Anyway, let's get going to the next point which is combat. Yeah, combat. So you walk around and punch enemies until they die and then you loot their corpses and steal their eyes so you can create ice cream.
Oh yeah! Okay, but seriously, most games offer combat systems to implicate tension, threats, challenges and make the overall game more exciting, because this is when things are about to get real. Many games conclude with an end boss, so drastically speaking, every other system in the game is working towards the combat system and the goal of finishing the game with a thrilling fight that pushes the players to their limit. The player naturally needs to get bigger, faster and stronger, so they can defeat the evil king that wants to end life once and for all. Alright, that's the list. Now let's go on to the things that I have in mind, things that I want to have in my game. Get ready. It is crafting, base building, some kind of food system and combat. Yeah, you probably thought I was going with something else. Um, yeah, no, <laughs> um, th th this is a good stuff. I, I, I like the good stuff. So why did I choose those elements? <clears throat> Let's take a look at crafting for example again. It's probably one of the greatest ways of managing how players obtain cool stuff. I definitely need to incorporate a system like this. But first, I need to figure out what items should actually be obtainable, what items should be craftable, um, maybe how the recipes for the items to craft should look like, and maybe what other tools are needed to enable the crafting for of the items. Maybe some kind of workbenches or, I don't know, things like that. For creating items that are solely based on primitive items like lumber or stone, a workbench could be enough. Other items that involve cutting edge technology might need an entire manufacturing line but um, yeah i th this is, is not really thought through base building is pretty obvious as well um, one very special approach was made by the game raft where your base your raft is your always nearby home from that point on i started thinking what other kind of bases could always be around but maybe something more dynamic something that could be used in combat so I got the thought of mechas. This is a core concept I was thinking of. Um, players find, obtain and maybe purchase mecha skeletons in different sizes. And based on the skeleton they can build a base around that. On the inside they have the usual stuff like chests, beds, furniture, workbenches and other kind of things. On the outside different weapons could be attached. And I really want to encourage that the entire mecha needs to be controlled as one closed unit by multiple people a bit like um, usual tanks work for example one player needs to steal the whole thing one player takes care of shooting a cannon another player looks after providing ammunition for shooting um, and maybe another player takes care of repairing potential damages as you can probably imagine there lies a huge potential of things that you could possibly do if you focus on this aspect um, even though this is still very early in development, so I'm not going to show any mecha related kind of things in this video, but yeah, of course in some of the following videos. Regarding the food system, I didn't fully decide yet in what direction I want this to go, but it's probably not going to be strictly necessary to be fed all the time. Yeah, because I'm myself very often annoyed by this. <laughs> and last but not least, combat. Of course there's going to be combat, but the question, the question is how is this going to look like? I really like to have fights in my games as dynamic as possible, but a question that arises is what does dynamic actually mean? I haven't decided fully on the details yet. I do have some things in mind, but i rather dedicate a whole video or at least one whole video to this topic, because there's so much to talk about really. So, I think this is a relatively good overview of the things I want to do in this project. Now it's time to show you what I have done so far. First, let me quickly start Unity and hit play. Oh wow, 
the second I hit play, my computer has blown up my entire house. I had to get a new house and recreate the entire project. And now I'm at about where I left off. Okay, so apparently it works now as intended. Oh, okay, as you can see. So anyway, I created a basic test scene that serves as some kind of playground. So I can test all the mechanics that are currently in development. Everything you can see is built on top of a multiplayer based implementation. And one of the first things I took care of is the inventory system. Um, now usually inventory systems are very straightforward to use. You have your items organized in uh, some kind of backpack, maybe have a hotbar for quick access and you can interact with your items. In terms of moving them around, having stacks of items, splitting and merging stacks, quickly moving items between your inventory and um, an open chest, for example, and the list goes on. When it comes to a programmatically implementation, those are all things that you have to consider. Before I had my first inventory system implemented, I thought this is going to be a straightforward task. Um, yeah, boy, oh boy, was I wrong. Even up until now, I have barely done what I have planned to do. It's working as intended, yes, even on the multiplayer side of things, everything is synchronized properly, but I still have some ideas that I want to add. But instead of spending time with fine tuning all these things, I rather focus on some other systems, uh, get the game done, and if I have time in the end, I come back and add a few more things. <laughs> Those are mostly quality of life things, you could say, so not that important right now. I rather have the game in a usable state and focus on getting the game playable. Another thing I would like to talk about is current main character. In the weeks before I've been learning to use Blender and this is the first time that I'm actually using Blender to create a character, so please don't judge me too hard. I modeled this character, gave it some color, gripped it and finally created some animations. And you may be thinking, why do the eyes of the squirrel look like this? Why do they look so weird? Um, because usually squirrels do have completely dark eyes, right? <laughs> yeah, I thought so too, but when I tried to give him completely dark eyes, I got scared. So I changed it back to, to this look. I was seriously so happy to see it all working out in the engine for the first time. I actually clipped the moment when I finally managed to correctly line up the attack animations. Um, yeah, take, take a look. Okay, 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 and... Oh. Oh. <laughs> this took me a long time, but in the end I finally had a character that I created with my very own hands. It was very new and very special to me. I hate it. Uh, yes, even though it works, it's not close to the quality I was aiming at. I treat this model as a prototype for now, and as I further progress with the project and improve my skills, I will eventually replace this model. Yeah, and actually everything else you see is going to be replaced as well. Most of the things are placeholders. All of the things are placeholders. I mean, just take a look at the running animation. It looks like running, yes, but if you focus on the back of the squirrel, it looks really unnatural, really stiff, and uh, I don't really like it. So yeah, this is the project. I'm not completely alone working on this. I got some help from a friend, Okami Wolf. He's going to take care of level design, game design. He even created a start menu so far. And yeah, as you can see, this is pure perfection. This is going to stay like this for the final release. So that's about it for the first video. I really hope you enjoyed it. Um, Maybe I got you to laugh a bit, or at least breathe air out of your nose harder than you usually do. <clears throat> I didn't set up any Discord servers or anything like that. If this is going to be more or less successful, if people are going to watch this, the videos, I'm going to create a Discord server for you guys, of course. And I would really appreciate it if you want to be part of this journey. I know this is a this is quite a big project, I am aware of that. But one of the reasons why I'm doing this is I've worked on many smaller projects, but none of them offered such a wide field of individual skills to learn and practice. I also have a bunch of other projects in mind. Some of them are very small and probably finished within a week. Others 
are so big that I need a huge team for that. Yeah, right now this cannot be done. Maybe I can squeeze in a one week project inside this huge project in between. Um, so let's see how this whole thing is going to work out. Bye bye.